Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today's our literature unit,、mm. and we're going to be talking about a novel that was published way back in 1985 by a Canadian writer by the name of Margaret. Atwood.、Mm. Maybe you've heard of her. She's quite famous. She has published all sorts of short stories and novels and stuff like that. Today we're going to talk about one of her books that has never been out of print since it was published. It's entitled *The Handmaid's Tale*, and this is a tale of repression. Yeah, it sure is. It's about women being、uh, taken as, I guess, servants and having all their rights stripped of them. It's a fictional novel by Ms. Atwood, a very famous Canadian writer. I think she's supposedly Canada's most famous female writer. We're going to go through, as we always do, to talk about the story's plot. And then we're going to go on and talk a little bit more about Ms. Atwood. And then our third day of our literature unit, as we always do, is going to be spent on talking about some of the themes inside the book. But as we always do, we're going to read through our lesson today. The U.S. has been replaced with the Republic of Gilead. A theocratic, totalitarian state that restricts women's rights. The story's narrator, Alfred, lost her rights completely. For some time, she was housed at the Red Center, where she was indoctrinated with Gilead's ideologies. The state women should be subservient to men and concerned solely with childbirth. After her re-education, Alfred is placed into the home of the commander and his wife, Serena Joy. As a handmaid, Alfred's only permitted to leave her room for the ceremony, when she has sex with the commander, and for supervised shopping trips. However, it's on these shopping trips that Alfred learns of May Day, the local resistance group. One night, the commander sends his chauffeur Nick to ask Alfred to visit him in secret. At first, they play Scrabble and read together, both of which are forbidden to Alfred. These illicit meetings eventually lead to them having an intimate relationship outside the ceremony. Meanwhile, Serena, impatient for a child, persuades Alfred to seduce Nick. Alfred obeys, and she soon develops feelings for Nick. When Serena finds out about Alfred and the commander, she sends Alfred to her room to await punishment. There, Alfred glances out the window and sees the black van of the eyes. Gilead's secret police force approaching. Nick quietly enters her room and tells her the van is actually May Day coming to rescue her. Alfred leaves in the van without knowing if she's on her way to prison or freedom. The novel is followed by an epilogue written after the fall of Gilead. The author discusses Alfred's story, and while he suggests that Nick had arranged for Alfred's escape, he is unable to confirm with certainty. That offered reach safety. Okay, everybody, let's talk about today's featured work of literature, *The Handmaid's Tale* by Margaret Atwood, a Canadian writer. This、uh, novel, as I said earlier, was published back in the 1980s, and it's still being read widely today. Now, the title is *The Handmaid's Tale*. A handmaid, of course, is basically a girl servant or a female servant. It could also be referred to as a hand maiden. They're both correct. Although this、uh, particular title. Title is not that common. I actually had to look this word up before today's lesson because it really isn't used that much. Well, not in our society today, that's for sure. But you would just be someone who served the the female person in a household. Usually, we're going to find out that this handmaid had some other duties that had to do with the、uh, male in the household as well. Maybe fixing his car or changing his oil for、yeah. him, or something like that. I don't think they had that sort of job. Tom, Tom's being sarcastic. Let's look at the title here.、Uh, Tom talked about handmaid, but go ahead and look at the end of the. 
subtitle of the book is "A Tale of Repression." Repression means when someone is prevented from doing what they want to; they're restrained. To be repressed means you hold things in. We still use the word "repressed" to talk about someone who doesn't really express their feelings, you know, and they kind of hold everything in inside. Well, this particular handmade offered that we're talking about, she had no freedom, so her freedoms were actually repressed. Indeed. So this is what this story is all about. So read on. Maybe you felt this way yourself before. And you might relate to this story. Well, here's the first paragraph. It says, "The U.S.,、uh, the United States, has been replaced with the Republic of Gilead." Okay, and what is Gilead? Well, that's a theocratic, totalitarian state or nation or country that restricts women's rights. So this is a story about Gilead, which I guess, as you told me before the program, Stephanie, is in the Bible somewhere. That word, yeah. The word is. I don't really know this story myself, but they're using this as the name of a future country in the United States. It has taken over the United States government. And we now have the Republic of Gilead, and it's a theocratic totalitarian state. Theocratic means it has to do with theocracy, which is a system of government in which we've got religious people running things, and、uh, they are running the country in the name of God. And I think we could even give them example of country today that is a theocracy, and that would be Saudi Arabia. Indeed, yes,、yeah. or a lot of those、uh, countries there who let、uh, religion basically be the law of. The land.、Mm. This is not the case here in Taiwan, but、no. in any case, here also we have the word totalitarian. Totalitarian. Okay, say that、uh, slowly here,、yeah. and、uh, you know, increase your speed over time, and you'll be more. <laughs> It's、confident. not easy, is it? Totalitarian, right? And this is basically a system of government in which basically one. Person or a small group of people pretty much control everything, and of course the most、uh, obvious example would be North Korea. That is a totalitarian state, a Ooh, totalitarian、yeah. country or nation. Yeah, dictatorship too. If there's、mm. just one person, but people who live in a totalitarian country. Really don't have much freedom at all. They have to do exactly what the government tells them to. So if you restrict something, you limit something. For example, sometimes I like to buy things online and have them sent over from America because they don't sell those things here in Taiwan. But sometimes customs restricts some of the things I buy, so they keep certain things under control. They put a limit on things when things are restricted. Maybe when you were growing up. Or maybe you're still living with your parents, and your parents have put a restriction on the amount of time you spend playing video games. They're restricting your video game time. That's a way to use it as well. Exactly. That's what is happening here to restrict. In this case, they're restricting women's rights. And the story's narrator is Offred. The narrator, of course, is the person who's telling the story. And she lost her rights completely. She had rights before, but now she has lost all those rights. She probably belongs to somebody. Maybe she's a slave or a、yeah. servant, or maybe in prison. And for some time, she was housed at the Red Center. And what is that? Well, that is some place where she was indoctrinated、mm. with Gilead's ideologies that women should be subservient to men and concerned solely with. Childbirth. Okay, the Red Center. Okay, that is some kind of, I guess, some kind of a government department, which will indoctrinate people. If you're indoctrinated, that means people teach you something, especially something that they want you to believe. And if you don't believe it, or if you don't accept it, you're probably going to be punished, or maybe even killed. Well, you can't criticize anything you're taught. You just have to listen and accept everything that's taught to you. Ideology is a system or a set of beliefs, usually. Has to do with、uh, the way a society is governed, like their political ideas, their economic ideas, policy, things like that. And they tell her that women should be subservient to men, which means you're a servant. You're in a lesser role than men. You're not as important to them. You're there to serve their needs. You could say. And is concerned solely with childbirth. So women are only there to have babies. So if you're concerned with something, 
it just means that's what you have to pay attention to. That's what your focus is. Maybe some of you have written a thesis in school, and maybe your thesis was concerned with the rights and freedom of pandas, you know, in the world. So that's what your focus is. Here, women were only supposed to focus on having babies solely. Just means. Only. So when you see that word, it means only. That's all they should worry about. They should not bother themselves thinking about things like politics, science, and other things like that. Now, in the next paragraph here, it says, "After her re-education, Offord is placed into the home of the commander、mm. and his wife Serena Joy." Okay, so she was re-educated. This happens sometimes when a totalitarian government takes over. People need to be educated again. They need to be re-educated. Educated, like with the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia and other countries like that,、uh, they have these re-education centers. And、uh, well, her education is complete. She graduated. She's a good girl now. And then she goes to live with the commander, who must be some kind of leader, a male, and he's got a wife by the name of Serena Joy. Yeah, kind of a funny name.、Yeah. After you hear that, maybe she's not so joyful. I wanted to mention too. Concerned is usually taught here in Taiwan first to mean that you're anxious or worried about something, but here that's not the definition that's being used. This here, this concern, just means that you're focused on something that's your topic of interest. So know that we use、uh, words as you do too in Chinese. We have words that have different、uh, definitions here. We're just Just meaning it's what she's concentrating on. Now here we've got the commander and his wife. I don't think we know the commander's name. He's just called the commander. If you're a commander of something, you're in charge of something. Actually, my brother-in-law, who's married to my sister, he's、uh, his title is commander, but he works for the police force in Arizona. But、uh, commander, obviously, he's got a high position, and his wife is. Serena Joy. Now, Offred is the handmaid, and she's only permitted to leave her room for the ceremony. Notice, ceremony is a capital C, so it's the name of some sort of a process that、uh, only happens in this book. So it's something the author made up. There's really nothing called the ceremony with a capital C. So we're going to find out what she has to do in this sentence. Actually, in the ceremony, she. She has to leave her room and then go and have sex with the commander, who she's not married to. She's not in love with. She has to do it because she is a servant. Yeah, and I'm wondering if Serena knows about this. I think we'll find out their relationship in just a couple of seconds here. I do but, believe she does. Yeah, and I guess she has to say, "Oh well, whatever. I'll look、it's, the other way." Well, it's for a baby. Uh, okay.、Yeah. Okay. That's the, that's、yeah. the reason it's for reproduction. Yeah. And that's one of the times she is allowed to leave her room for that ceremony,、uh -huh. and she can also leave her room for supervised shopping trips.、Uh, supervised means somebody is watching over you; they are observing you and making sure that you don't do something you're not supposed to do. And again, she can do these shopping trips. Maybe she has to pop down to the local grocery store and pick up a loaf of bread or a bottle of milk or something like. That, go to Costco. Who knows? Something like that. And however, it's on these shopping trips that Offord learns of May Day, the very famous rock and roll band from Taiwan.、No. She heard their CDs and she thought, "Wow, <laughs> I want to go to their concert. They really sound good." No, that's not what May Day means here. Unfortunately, this is something else. It's、uh, actually a local resistance group. Okay, that is、uh, some kind of group that is a. Opposed to the government, and because this is a totalitarian country, they're probably going to be in trouble if they get caught. Resistance means you just refuse to accept what someone is telling you to do. I think the name of the resistance group is quite interesting because May Day actually means help. I'm in trouble. Help me. So it's actually a distress signal. They've had it forever. It seems like it came up maybe in the 1800s. I'm not sure, but May Day, May Day, is a signal that you can send out over the radio, letting people know that you're in trouble. You might be on a ship that's going down or a plane that's cr going to crash.、May、yeah,、day. I know May Day actually comes originally from French. May a day, please help me. May Day,、uh -huh. and that's what we say in English, and that's where we're going to leave off now at the midway point of today's lesson. We're going to stop right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. 大家好，欢迎收听 English Digest， 我是 Alice。今天我们要阅读的文章是 Unit Fifteen， 文学单元的第一天课程。
The Handmaid's Tale: A Tale of Repression. 使女的故事，权力与身体政治。在今天的课程中，我们将会概略的说明这本小说的情节。首先，课文的第一段说明了故事的背景以及主角 Alfred 被灌输的观念。接着，第二段描写了 Alfred 成为使女的生活，并得知了当地有个反抗团体。我们看到这一段的第二句 ：As a handmaid, Alfred's only permitted to leave her room for the ceremony. 身为一名使女，奥弗弗雷德只有在进行仪式时才被准许离开她的房间。这边有个片语 ：be permitted to， 再加原形动词。意思是被允许做什么事。动词 permit 就是准许、允许。例如，我们可以说 ，You are not permitted to read these files. They are top secret. 你不能阅读这些档案，它们是最高机密。动词 permit 还有其他常见的衍生字，像是名词 permission, P-E-R-M-I-S-S-I-O-N。意思是正式许可、权限。例如 ，My parents gave me permission to attend the concert next week. 爸妈给我去参加下礼拜演唱会的许可。另外一个衍生字是形容词 permissive, p e r m i s s i v e， 有宽容的、纵容的的意思。例如。Julie is quite permissive, as she always says yes when her kids ask to do something. Julie 颇为宽容，因为当她的孩子要求要做某些事的时候，她通常都说好。再来，我们看到课文的同一段第三句。However, it's on these shopping trips that Alfred learns of May Day, the local resistance group. 然而，奥弗弗雷德就是在这些购物行程中得知了五月天这个当地的反抗团体。我们看到这边有个强调句型，那就是 it is 或是 was， 再加要强调的部分，再加 that 点点点。由于课文要强调 Alfred 是从何得知反抗团体，所以把 these shopping trips 放在 it 之后，后面再加 that 子句。举个例子。It was you that made the mistake, so you had better come up with some solutions. 是你犯了错误，所以你最好想出解决办法。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our lesson, everybody. We're going to continue talking about our featured work of literature, *The Handmaid's Tale* by Margaret Atwood. We've been talking about the plot so far. We've got Alfred, the main character. She's also the narrator. She's lost all her rights. She was re-educated, and later she went to live with the commander. Again, this is in a totalitarian, theocratic country that restricts women's rights. Okay, so here we go again.、Mm-hmm. We're going to pick up on the plot or the storyline. We're actually starting in on the third paragraph. If you're following along, one night the commander sends his chauffeur Nick to ask Alfred to visit him in secret. If you're a chauffeur, it means your job is to drive the car that belongs to your employer and take them somewhere. You could work for a big car company and be a chauffeur. That's not like a cab driver. That would mean a chauffeur usually has one household or one company they work for, and they usually drive around someone in particular. Well, Nick is employed by the commander. Maybe he's a servant too. We don't know. Well, he is asked by the commander to go get Alf Alfred. 
What a weird name, huh, Alfred?、Mm. Alfred, and say, "Hey, the commander wants you to visit him now, but you must do it in secret. Don't let anyone know." Now, in the past, she would go visit the commander, but it wasn't a secret, and she would go for the ceremony, which means the commander wanted to have sex with her. But now, the commander's asked his servant Nick, a chauffeur, to go ask Alfred if she would come and visit him in secret. So, what are they going to do, Tom? And They're going to have an innocent little evening together. They play、yeah. Scrabble. That's a board game with little tiles and le- with letters on them. And you, you spell words out, and you try to get points.、Sure. They also read books together. But both of these are forbidden to Alfred.、Yeah. Uh, if something's forbidden, that means you're not allowed to do it, or you're not allowed to have it. Of course, they want to oppress the women, so of course they're not supposed to know how to play Scrabble or read books and get ideas. These are illicit meetings that they're having. <gasps> Ooh. Illicit just means they are forbidden. You're not supposed to be doing them. If somebody finds out, you could get killed. You could get in big trouble. Yeah, or it's just considered to be really bad. You know, yep, yep, <laughs> you're、yep. breaking some sort of custom or rule. For example, here in their weird world of the Republic of Gilead, Alfred can't even read or play Scrabble with other friends of hers. So they're doing it against the law. It's forbidden, at least to Alfred. Now these illicit meetings eventually lead to them having an intimate relationship outside the ceremony. Intimate can be. A couple of different things. You could have an intimate relationship with a friend, where you just share secrets and you're really close. You have a lot of similar interests. You support each other. But there's no sex. You might have an intimate relationship with a friend of the same sex, and you like boys, and she's a girl, but you still have an intimate relationship. If you're really, really close friends and you share secrets with the, each other that you wouldn't tell anybody else, it's intimate. But intimate can also mean physically close. So it sounds like they are now friendly. You know, he's letting her do things that she normally can't do, and maybe they're having sex outside that. Ceremony with the capital C.、Ceremony. I guess the ceremony was just sex only, no feelings involved. No, but no now、feelings. they're actually getting attracted to each other. Yeah, they they're like getting each intimate. Other. They like each other. Meanwhile, Serena, remember, she's the wife of the commander, and she's putting up with this because she has to. But、uh, she is impatient for a child. I guess she's sterile or something. She yeah, can't she have her have, own children. Yeah, might have so she wants、uh, the commander to have a child with Serena. I guess it's not working out. So she's impatient. She wants it right now. If you're impatient, you just can't wait for somebody, and she wants that child. So, well, it's not working with the commander. How about you, Nick, the chauffeur? Maybe you are a good <laughs> specimen. So she he's wants... probably younger and more sexy. Could be. Yeah, those chauffeurs can be pretty hot sometimes.、Mm-hmm. And she persuades Alfred to seduce Nick. If you seduce somebody, basically you just convince them to have an intimate relationship with you. Like men are trying to seduce women all the time, but women sometimes try. To seduce men too, especially if they're really rich. Now, Alfred obeys, and、uh, unfortunately for her, she soon develops feelings for Nick, which makes her life more complicated. So, when Serena, the wife, finds out about Alfred and the commander having these illicit meetings and becoming very close and having feelings for each other, she sends Alfred to her room to await. Punishment. If you await something, you're waiting for something. You can simply take that verb "await" and put in two words "wait for," and it's the same meaning. There, Alfred glances out the window and sees the black van. A van is a very large car, and it's called the Black Van of the Eyes. People are watching her. It's Gilead's secret police force approaching. Mm. You don't want anything to do with the secret police force, as we know. Now, Nick quietly enters her room and tells her the van is actually May Day, the resistance force coming to rescue her. That's much better news. So, what happens, Tom? Okay, well, Alfred leaves in the van without knowing if she's on her way to prison or freedom. So yes, we do have this black van there, but she's been told different things. She might think that they are the the eyes, which is like the secret police, the KGB, or Big Brother, something like that. But on the other hand, Nick has told her that no, don't worry about it. It's May Day. They're the、uh, resistance organization. They're coming to take you away, and you can join them and be free. So we don't really know for sure which van she got in. 
And the novel is followed by an epilogue. An epilogue is like、uh, the section of a book at the end of it that kind of comments and gives you a conclusion on what has just happened. Okay, and this is was written to describe the fall of Gilead. So I guess at some point in the future, the government of Gilead was overthrown. Well, thank goodness! It sounds like May Day. The resistance force was successful in overthrowing them. So the author discusses Alfred's story, and while he suggests that Nick had arranged for Alfred's escape, he's unable to confirm with certainty that Alfred actually got away. From the bad guys. Remember, she was in her room awaiting punishment. If you arrange for something, guys, it just means you set plans, you make plans. Maybe you're organizing a meeting, or maybe you're even set- setting up an appointment for people to meet together and discuss something. Well, the person who does the epilogue, it's an author, of course, who's a male. He arranges. He doesn't actually know for sure if、uh, Alfred got away, but he said that Nick probably did arrange. For her escape, if you confirm something with certainty, certainty means you're absolutely, positively sure. He's unable to confirm that, so we're not really sure if Alfred got away or not. I hope she did. Yeah, well, you have to read that book yourself to find out, or talk to other people and see what they think as well. That brings us to the end of our discussion about today's featured novel. Right now, we're going to take another time out and listen to our Chinese teacher. 接下来我们看到课文第三段第二句。At first, they play Scrabble and read together, both of which are forbidden to Alfred. 起初，他们一起玩英文拼字游戏和阅读。这两件事对奥弗弗雷德而言都是被禁止的。这里的 both of which 是数量代名词搭配关系代名词。Which 指的就是前面提到的 ，They play Scrabble and read together。而数量代名词 both 后面接 of， 表示这两件事对 Alfred 来说都是被禁止的。由于 which 是关系代名词，它同时有代名词和连接词的功用，所以不需要用 and 连接前后两句。举个例子。那位作家写了许多书，而其中的一些书使他获得奖项。The writer has written plenty of books, some of which have earned him awards. 这里的 which 代替的就是前面提到的 books。那如果要用 and 连接前后两句的话，我们就可以说 ：The writer has written plenty of books, and some of them have earned him awards. 这里的 them 虽然也代替前面的 books， 但是它没有连接词的功能，所以必须要用连接词 and 来连接前后两句。最后，我们来看课文的最后一段第二句。The author discusses Alfred's story, and while he suggests that Nick had arranged for Alfred's escape, he's unable to confirm with certainty that Alfred reached safety. 这边提到小说之后有一篇后记，以及作者对 Alfred 故事的见解。大家看到这边可能会觉得很奇怪，《使女的故事》的作者 Margaret Atwood 不是女生吗？为什么这边会用 he 呢？其实这边的 the author 和 he 指的是后记的作者，而不是 Margaret Atwood。这在小说中是常见的写作技巧。借由安排一位客观的叙述者来增加故事本身的非虚构性和可信度。以上就是今天的课程，谢谢收听。With all sincerity, we thank you for joining us for today's program, and we eagerly anticipate our next meeting in the future when you come to join us. Then, from all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye.、Bye.